Welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, a show about weirdos, with your hosts, John Fahey, Aaron Peter, and Matt Brutzon. Hello folks, welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, it's a show about weirdos, doggone it. My name is John Fahey, your host. And it is John Boy time, I'm afraid. Joining me as ever, for the prettiest boy under the sun, the Sultan of Smut. We're talking about Aaron Joseph Peter right now. That's me. Uh, I'm guilty as charged. Uh, I've been accused of Trinko's PP once or twice in my life. Uh-huh. And yep. You've played guilty every time. One hun- No contest. <laughs> <laughs> I like the taste. Yeah, I, li- I like the taste. <laughs> Such a good defense. <laughs> I don't know if you don't. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to my right, your left. Yes. Is Doctor mm-hmm. Matt Brusso. Hi. Yeah. LSD. That's now, exactly right. Now, mo- Matt- molesty. Molesty. No. <laughs> Molester. <laughs> uh, now, Matt, are you a doctor of trigonometry? <laughs> I suppose I am, Aaron. You know, it comes and goes, as do I. And, mm. uh, you know, I learn things all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like how to frig. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And frag, yeah. Man, well. Frig. Fragonometry. Frigonometry. Hell yeah. Tribonometry. Oh, oh yeah. And I, oh, yeah, I have a live show. This uh, where I'll be demonstrating my knowledge this week. Oh, is that right? Yep. That's right. That's going to be a robot party. Yep, Thursday. Fuck yeah. I like that place. We've all done shows there. Yes, uh-huh. that's very exciting. Um. Uh, shout out to uh, the Bitburger. Oh, Bitburger, uh, Deutsches Bier. Uh, das Beste. Das Beste. Uh, shout whether, out whether you're a Schweinbauer or a Schneider. Yeah. Or a Magneto. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bitburger. <laughs> if you guys don't know, that's a deep cut from X Men First Class. That's right. Uh, in the last 24 hours, Nick Johnson has subscribed to the Patreon. Fuck yeah, Nick. As a tryout. Big Nick Jet. And we had uh, Joshua Manners <laughs> on March 1st tryout. Sherry Preston, piss connoisseur. Wow. 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 Well, you know, it's a one in a hundred people have the wherewithal to be a true of course. piss connoisseur. Mm-hmm. Kevin Benedetti? Kevin piss, Benedetti. Piss connoisseur. Wow, wow. Do and, we have, do we have a, a tier called Comelier? I don't think we do. Comelier. 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 I, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Uh, Somalia have come. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. We Naturally. should we should have that. Yeah. We definitely should. Mm-hmm. <laughs> John Cabar, your lighter. If you build it, they will come. That's right. Uh, and if you come. If you're building. They w- they'll pay for it. <laughs> Thank you. Anthony Adams, try out on the Patreon. Getting an episode per week. Hey. Not available an ex- to the public. An extra, no, an extra episode I per mean, week. If I may toot my own horn here. Which I love to do. Yeah, I love when you toot your horn. Oh, multiple times a day. Sick. Doctor's orders. <laughs> Doctor of trigonometry. Uh, oh, it was trigonometry. Trigonometry. That's right. Listen, man. He's <laughs> the <laughs> <laughs> If you like this show, and you know, you if one of the things that you like about it is not necessarily the the riveting profiles. Yes. The hardcore history. Yeah. If that if that is just. A part of what you like. And what the, what if the part that you really like is some of the witty banter? You want to see these guys get off the chain. Yeah, the insight. The insight into uh, uh, topics mm-hmm. that aren't necessarily profiles of weirdos. Mm-hmm. Or perhaps you just like to hear us wax philosophical on certain things. Yes. Or if maybe you like to hear a little guy <laughs> like James Burke <laughs> connect the dots between things in history, uh-huh. or you like to hear a little guy named, I don't know, Aaron Pita mm-hmm. explain it all mm-hmm. in a concise and overly analytical manner on <laughs> things that have no it. business a, being uh-huh. analyzed it's in, a, in a, such a way. It's a loving fashion. Mm-hmm. It, in yeah, such a, in a, uh, in a truly um, yeah. phenomenal fashion. Yeah. Um, you know, Terminator 1 and 2 yeah. explained all the way. Yeah. Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. All the way explained. Completely disregarding excellent adventure beforehand. We'll get there. We'll get, we'll get there. there. We'll get In there. In due time. In I'm due thinking time. about, I, you know, we are coming up on the one year anniversary of Avengers Endgame. That's exactly right. Get it in Blu-ray. Uh, Disney Plus. Yeah. Uh, I'm working on that. Also working on doing Stargate. Oh, nice. Stargate's the, uh... Really? Yeah. Yeah, film? Star, the, the film. That's fucking exciting, yeah. man. Yeah, the James Spader vehicle. 
Uh, so anybody that's going to get that, like for instance, Anthony Adams or Zane Newman or uh, Morgan, a name withheld, uh, <laughs> Chris Chris Maladin, uh, Salvador Sanchez, classic, uh, Kyle Fluger, uh, Jordan March, Kellen Aritano is a mope. That is a one dollar subscriber that gets the regular episodes without ads. But hey, we, uh, well, thank you. Hey, that's, yeah, that's still nice. You're not gonna have Bloomberg knocking your door down, getting, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know hey. what I mean? Infiltrating your mind, no, you know, I, dictating, buying your, his way into your, your alpha voting brain habits. Waves. Uh, Kellen Aritano, I assume, uh, related to Allison Aritano, another uh, fan and friend of the show. These are all recent subscribers. These are Very all nice. from yeah the last uh, 20, 20 days. This thank is you, incredible folks. news. It's really, it's really fine times and good stuff. And uh, it's a very exciting time for the show. We did have a wonderful response to the Shane Moss episode. And we had a great time doing it. We had a fantastic time doing it. Um, it is a uh, very good exposure for the show. Again, if you do love the show, please tell anybody and everybody you can about it. Yep. Um, we have some seriously exciting stuff coming up on this show. Yeah, we can't even talk about it. We can't even talk about it. But it, um, it is... <sighs> It's high high times. Yeah. High times for profiles yeah. right now. 2020. 2020 is really kind of tearing it up. Aaron, that's what it's like you were on the uh you were on the slopes this weekend i was and uh we had we brought in both uh cindy and chris to replace you two-person mm -hmm. replacement for, uh -huh. the, for the patreon uh -huh. very fun time yeah yeah very very fun stuff they brought some really weird uh early youtube uh Cooking eccentrics, oh, strange, I strange like people. That a lot. Um, and Matt uh, brought us the, the best uh, knuckleball pitcher. It was a very, very fine time. Phil, Phil Negro, yeah, eighties, eighties, seventies, sixties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was um, a, there was a knuckleball pitcher like in the night, the two thousands too. It was Tim Wakefield. Yeah, Tim Wakefield. That's that's I, that was my guess as to who would be the best knuckleball pitcher of all time. Phil Negro. Phil Negro. Uh, please, uh, please get onto the Patreon if you're not are already. Uh, it is the number one way to support this show. Also, uh, check us out profiles, profiles in eccentricity on Instagram, PP Podcast on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Hell of a way to interact with us. It really is, and you know we message us. Yeah, try it G out. You want to give us suggestions? Get in touch. Yeah, we answer <laughs> often. Yeah. It Too could, often. Yeah, sometimes live. In we the had moment. a really wonderful message from uh, from somebody oh, oh, this weekend. Yeah, just yeah. He heaping, heaping, heaping on the praise, the praise. On specific episodes. Oh, and saying that uh, the the young woman was saying that our, she loved to our, masturbate to our, our voices. voices. But but even though she's not into men at all, which don't exist because gender is a construct, right. as we so, all well, know. She's learning <laughs> that gender is a construct. But yes. While she is in this learning process, she yeah. does. Like the sound of yeah, our heterosexual while she, <laughs> while she believes in this matrix of yeah. lesbianism, yeah. she's you know finding out that there is you know a bigger world out there where you can just get off to the sound of three perverts' voices that happen to be construed as male but are not. It's really just a box you're putting us in. But yeah. Hey. And also, uh, uh, please subscribe on YouTube. Uh, we are yes. close to uh, getting over. Uh, uh, a financially, you know, a good number there of subscribers. Oh, so it makes we could eventually make money on the YouTube. Yeah, listen, folks, if if this would be wonderful, if this was all that we did, yes, uh, it'd be the it'd be the, the best thing in the world. It would be just best, yeah. It's the the only thing I want to do is yeah. hang out with you boys, yeah, and talk <laughs> and, about and dumb have, shit and have. All these mopes and oh. weirdos and tryouts, eavesdropping and... in on these conversations yes. and in a way participating. Yes, Particip par participating. Par participating. Participating. Oh. Oh, also, got... if you are, uh... we should we should give participation trophies. <laughs> we should participation. Also, if you are, you can fill them up with urine. A uh, a listener on YouTube that would like us to. Get to the subject faster and stop with all the preambles <laughs> in the beginning. Please remember that you are a non-contributing member of society and to go fuck yourself every day of the week. For which you probably skipped past <laughs> this already. So uh, it is. It yeah. is a, there is a bar. The, uh, if you look at the window, on the bottom of the window is a bar with the time. Yeah. And you can just go anywhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you can instantly have whatever you want. But you're still complaining, mm -hmm. and yeah. your entitlement is baffling and shocking. Uh, but, um, you know, just maybe another podcast is for you. Maybe you should really shove off and shove along. 
Or, you know, if you want to come to your senses, we'll have you back. Yeah, yeah. If you can stop being a little piece of shit, <laughs> then, yeah, show up. And I will love you till the day you die. Yeah. It's it's all or nothing. Yeah. You know? You got to be all the way in or all the way either, out. Either you're... Uh, this is not a buffet, pal. Yeah. Either we're killing your wife and family or we're making you king of the tribe. Yeah, yeah. That's you got to take... Uh, Liberating Johnson uh, call right, back. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Aaron, uh, episode before the Shade and Moss episode, you did do uh, a wonderful uh, Can He Be Killed? That's right, Sir Adrian Carton du Bart. That's right. Um, and you had a little... Uh, yeah, 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 thank you. Uh, he uh, he was unkillable. Yes. Shot in the cock. The cock. Ass, yeah. face, ear, fake eye, all sorts of shit. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he, he killed his own fake eye. Yeah, he threw it out of a fucking window. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, he cut out the eye that turned away. <laughs> Gangs of New York reference. And then he, uh, and then he just uh, put a patch over it. And he also lost a hand. He ripped off his own fingers because the doctor wouldn't amputate them. So here he is, a one-handed, sixty-year-old, one-eyed man going back into war. Just a real. Uh... He also broke his back with spinal. Yeah, his back is broken. <laughs> his back was broken uh, by slipping on some uh, sipping sipping on. A cocoa mat. Sip it on some scissor, but yeah, was in, the uh, issue. I think it was in Vietnam. <laughs> Vietnam! Uh, but I just wanted to give a little addendum. Not an addendum, but just a, hey, here's another, you know, if I may. I think I think we're all weak. We're all just weak. Hmm. Yeah. You know? What, what happened? Somebody said a trigger word. Right. Yes, yes. Now, you, now you've got IBS because of it. <laughs> some... Someone called you a and you shit your pants. <laughs> Is that what happens now? Yeah, but that's write, how I get you, off, and you, write, too. and you write a thing piece. <laughs> All right, here's the deal, man. You're going to call me a and you shit my pants. Then we go our separate ways, okay? <laughs> we both come. Immediately come. I'll meet you here again next week. You're allergic to peanuts. You know? You pieces of shit. <laughs> now all these guys are unkillable. Of the previous generation, you know what sure. I'm saying? Yeah. For example, no. Amo Koivinen from Finland. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So I don't know if you let's if you want to go back to just before World War II, mm -hmm. um, the Soviets were just constantly invading uh, Finland yes. and these Nordic areas, right? And the Finns, they were having none of it. They were not. And it's a snowy region. Yeah. So they had a lot of like ski patrol guys. Yeah, they had the dudes with the machine guns yeah. on skis. Yeah, you, if it's you the like craziest thing of all time. If you I, like the guys from, if you like Inception, if you like yeah. the third act of Inception, well, you're gonna love pre World War II and, Finland. But it, mm -hmm. it really is. Can we just guys with machine guns on skis? Da, 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 da. It is straight up James Bond level. It's been in I think three Bond movies. Madness. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's madness. Yes. And um, yeah, but, 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 sorry. Continue. But like, let's just take a moment to. <laughs> Just put, just uh, picture that uh, in your head. Putting off also a massive, massive empire with uh, your your just ability to control with, the terrain yeah. that you're used to. Absolutely, I mean, crazy. It's it, it's it's much like Af Afghans. Yeah, Afghanistan, just you know, goat herders and holding off a massive empire yeah. with their knowledge of the terrain, caves, right? under yeah. underground rivers, like yep. it's. Yeah. And I, I was talking to a buddy this weekend about it. And I have more to talk about it later, but. Just you just drew an interesting parallel, so I, I wanted to give a little credit to the Afghan people. Right. Uh, uh, so Ivo Ki, what was his name? Imo. Koivinen. Imo Yumo. We all mo. Koivinen. Mm -hmm. uh, Imo Koivinen. Um, he was on the ski patrol uh, for the for the Finns. Uh, so the Finns were being invaded by the Soviets. The Soviets took a bunch of land from them. Uh, eventually, when 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 Germany uh, attacked the Soviet Union. Uh, at the beginning of World War II, even though they said they would not, uh, one of the most surprise attack, biggest surprise attack in history. Um, Finland partnered with Germany. Uh, I'm gonna sneeze. You're shitting me. Yeah, they partnered with Germany because they want to get their land back. <laughs> in, in in the Nazi era. Yes. Wow. Yes. So part of the battle of of. Um, this is a part of World War II I do not know about whatsoever. This is very fascinating. Yeah. So. So they partnered with Germany to get some of their land back, and they did some invading of what was at that time Soviet territory, but was originally finished. Finland. Exactly. Um, so this guy Imo was a uh, part of the ski patrol, and they were, you know, uh, they were deep. They were in past enemy lines, and uh, they got ambushed and surrounded by the Red Army. 
and um, him and his comrades, they managed to escape the, the, the encirclement, but they were still being chased by the Soviets. So mm-hmm. they're, you know, they're skiing, mush, mm-hmm. mushing, whatever you say. And, um, <laughs> mush, mushing? Yeah, like, like the, on like the, with the dogs. I did a rod. Yeah. Got it. Uh, and he, this IMO, he, uh, young man, he was, uh, he was tasked with carrying the, the entire platoon supply of something called Pervitin, which you might know, um, more like commonly. Me. As the drug methamphetamine. <laughs> uh, <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone's got to carry it. Yeah, someone's got to carry it. You're going to need that. You're going to need that stuff. Yeah. Better, hey, Fini- Finnish ski soldiers on meth? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've seen that part of Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it was given to German and Finnish troops um, during the war to help them keep awake during long, you know. Oh, the, the cold and the machine guns on skis would not keep you awake. Listen, man. You might doze off at a moment's notice. Yeah, yeah. You never know. You know, you get really tired, dude. <laughs> War is hell. A lot of legs. Um, a lot of legs? So, yeah, so, tires, yeah. <laughs> so um, during the unit's escape, he, he fell behind. Um, Did he try a meth? Did he catch yeah. up? <laughs> you know, he fell behind and got, kind of got lost, and, and it got dark, and he... He was skiing for hours trying to escape these guys, and, and you know, he has the shipment of and meth, he, and he has the he has all the, of it. the entire bottle of meth for the entire platoon. Here's the thing: people, a lot of people don't know about meth is a little goes a long way. <laughs> yeah, well, they had one <laughs> bottle, so and you know what a lot does. <laughs> <laughs> so he was escaping, and it's in the darkness. He's wearing like mitts because it's zero degrees below fuck, <laughs> <laughs> and he can't just get one out. So he dumps the entire bottle out. No. And chiefs all. No. Like 30, 40, 50, 60, who knows? But all, entire bottle. Who's to say? <laughs> who knows? He doesn't remember. So, you know, he gets the, uh, you know, he doesn't know. They don't know. <laughs> I woke up and I was the king of Finland, and <laughs> we had expanded deep I, into I Russia. Had, I had an aftertaste of liver in my mouth and I lost 30 pounds. Everybody's talking really slowly. So he took the entire bottle uh, and. You know, he had he had a short burst of energy where he definitely made up some some distance. Uh, but after that, his body basically went into shock. He went into he he started uh, having hallucinations. You don't say. Body temperature fluctuations, uh, full delirious state, and then uh, he lost consciousness. Wow. And uh, when he woke up, I mean, he was even more lost than before because everyone was gone. And, even uh, the ghosts, even the yeah. hallucinations. Yeah, yeah, all the, the flying monkeys yeah. and pink elephants. He, he was lonely. So his comrades were gone, and he, uh, all he had was like some water, his gun, and what he was wearing. And no more meth. No, no. Uh, he'd he'd taken all it. of the that's meth. Trouble with meth. Um, so he's in the forest, and, and, you know, the army, the Red Army is still, you know, hot hot on pursuit. Uh, and so he, he, he continues on his trek home. Uh, he steps on a landmine. No. Steps on a landmine, uh, horribly injured, and Didn't then- Didn't ski over it, huh? No, nah, no, nah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's one of those proximity mines like James Bond. <laughs> yeah. Uh, GoldenEye on Nintendo Complex. Get it now. <laughs> um, and so he, he crawls his way over to a ditch and uh, just laid in this ditch for some days, just- Really? Yeah, trying to get back, yeah, I guess, come down. I guess maybe the cold kind of slows the blood loss. Yeah, and so the, the meth, you know- Meth ain't gonna hurt. I mean, yeah, well. It's not gonna help, but it's definitely not gonna hurt. Uh, so he was there for a bunch of days, um, just waiting to kind of like recoup, get back on his feet. Didn't ha- eat anything other than um, some pine buds and uh, a bird, raw. Wow. Like a tiny little finch kind of thing. Nice. Nice. Uh, a, a, a Siberian jay is what it was, and it's a tiny little piece of shit bird, probably mostly bones and feather. <laughs> In that moment, though, that's a... So he, um... During this whole time, you know, he's still high as fuck. Yeah. You know, the... He took 30 doses of this yeah. shit, right? Feels so good. So, <laughs> by this point, he had traveled 250 miles on foot or ski from his point of origin, and he was eventually picked up by, um, the Finns. Oh, they, they found him. Yeah, they found him. They found him. Uh, and his heart rate was measured at 200 beats. Oh, <laughs> <holy> <laughs> shit. Normal human heart rate, 60 to 80. He's 
we days upon days of at least 200 beats per minute he had dropped down to 94 pounds oh my dear god uh but 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 was still not not, hung not hungry succumbing to the cold either no no there are tough people they're used in there you know right. they're bundled up right but also but also maybe bur- it's maybe i it's... mean that fat that he burned and that mm-hmm. muscle that he burned was turned into heat yeah right right and also the the dead bird 200 Beats per minute probably felt like da, a, da, 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 da. yeah, kind of you know. I wonder uh, what he thought the bird was at the time. It really could have been anything on meth. <laughs> I thought it was a turkey dinner. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know how well f- fed the birds are in Siberia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he, um, you know, took him took him a while, but eventually came down after a few more days. Uh, and back from a most excellent adventure. <laughs> what are you guys doing here? Station. <laughs> Uh, and lived to the ripe old age of 72. No shit! Yeah. Wow. OD'd, blown up by a landmine, fell in a ditch. What was damaged by the mine? I think it's his legs. Like, but... Yeah, but it wasn't, it was like, it wasn't horrific. It didn't yeah. blow his foot off, but he was okay, hit by so some shrapnel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's okay. still able to move, you know. Yeah. And he, and he covered some ground, 250... Miles. Yeah, but that was just—he just did that in small circles. <laughs> yeah, I was cumulative. Yeah, yeah. yeah. in yeah. the same place. Yeah, exactly. It is. Uh, he planted that mine. Yeah. Cruelty of a landmine, man. Oh, they're the fuck. They're just like the most just, devious. Uh, absolutely, just. I mean, but and, and then they, and then you just can't get rid of them. They're just there. Yeah. Now there's just yeah. whole places. They're no still one can finding them. Yeah. Well, there's whole places. All where they, they, the whole area is blocked. So, off so because... one of the uh, I think one of the the you know. Absolutely indictable things that the, the U.S. still vo- votes against is mm-hmm. reserving the right to use well, them well, in the no, future. Well, I, and... I believe either we uh, we either stopped joining it or because there was a, like a resolution or something last year oh. yeah. to 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 continue to ban them, and we did not. For that. this one time, we didn't go with it. I wonder. I wonder who was responsible. Well, no, it, we routinely have been against, yeah. I mean, d- d- insane things, like in the UN with, uh, you know, all right, let's not, at the very least, let's not do this in war. Yeah. And it'll be like, in the entire UN, it'd be like us and Somalia raising their hands, mm-hmm. and Somalia doesn't even have a government, it's just some random <laughs> whack. Somalia, <laughs> Somalia random raises <laughs> their stump. <laughs> yeah, it's some that random. got blown off from a land. Random yeah. whack job that's like, you know, a warlord there, but like, yeah, it's absolutely insane, the things. The U.S. will still yep. defend pretty much. For, well, we make money off them. That's yeah, it. yeah, it's it's crazy. Pretty sweet. Um, yeah, <laughs> the stuff with like you know the, the chemical weapons, the biological weapons. It's it, it's it's madness. It's, it's all like, madness. It's all madness, dude. You know, like you should. You got to be on meth just to make it. You know? If you if you are 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 developing anything along those lines, there is you know the U.S. government can come in and just take a copy of whatever you make. Yeah, you know. Legally, even though employing them in war is completely illegal internationally. But it's like, well, just in case, you know. But yeah, that is that is absolutely insane. I did not know at all that the Finns were allied with I mean, Germany yeah, for any portion. Enemy of my enemy is my friend. Yeah, and I guess moment, they, and, yeah, and, I and fin, Finland had said, I mean, apparently repeatedly, like, we don't plan on taking anything further than our original border. Right. Um, fascinating thing about this that. This is like 39, so like it was before yeah. po- ship pop off. So post-war, uh, a really interesting thing that my dad told me about was that like, you know, the border hostilities post-war with Finland and the USSR were, you know, tense to say the least because of all of that history. And there was like a Finnish prime minister that just like <laughs> rang up the Kremlin and was like, hey, I'm Taking down my border guard. He's like, if you're going to invade, call me. And like the Russians took it as like this very friendly gesture and they enjoyed really good relations with the Finnish. Yeah. You know, yeah. thereafter, you know, they were just kind of like, what are we doing this for? Yeah. Like, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. So, like, I'm just going to take the chance that you might not be an asshole and like, yeah. can we get along? And it was very well received. Huh. Yeah. Was it Khrushchev? At that time, um, I think it might have been uh, Khrushchev or the one after that I don't remember the name of. After Nikita? Uh, 
It's a short-lived one, but yeah, uh, they tend to be. <laughs> All right, so listen, we got to do way more in this episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Matt, you have uh huh a little bit of uh, uh, freakish stuff for us. I do, I do, John. Uh, so if we have time, I'll get into the geeks, but I want to talk about some freaks first. Ooh. Geeks, uh, because these are the ones who, uh, uh, well, it's not that they do not eat. Sometimes, uh, sometimes they eat, and it doesn't work. It's like the opposite of uh, Terrere. A great uh, episode. Right, right. Terrere, the man. Terrere, who yes. Eat, uh, who could eat everything? Yeah, maybe a baby. So, yeah, probably. Definitely. Seem, odds are, seems like. Uh, I want to talk about some living skeletons, as they were called. Really? And uh, there may have been some through the years, bef- but the first one we know about um, is Claude Ambro Surat. Claude Ambro Surat. Like Ambr- Ambrose is the middle name? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or there's Claude Ambrose is his first name. It's a hyphen. Oh, God. French? Uh, yes. Of course. Yeah, I, Same time as Terrer? He was born in 1797 oh. or 1798. And Terrer was like 1750, right? Uh, no, he was uh, he was around during um, um, Napoleon, Napoleon yeah, right? That's, yes, yeah. Okay. So that's... Yeah, early 1800s. Yeah, okay. Well, you ate a lot or a little. <laughs> <laughs> he was born in Troyes, France. Feast or famine. Yeah, Napoleon, he, he loves uh, banana splits. <laughs> That's right. He loves ice cream. Uh, he, was, uh, he was born a, a, a healthy kid, but by age 10, he had a, uh, uh, this thing called a precuts excavatum, a.k.a. a depressed chest. Oof, and, that's so gross, mm. dude. And, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it, you know, not... Uh, Caved in like... Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Hard on the eyes. Yeah. And he was the first person known as a living skeleton, or in French they called him l'homme anatomique ou le squelette vivant. Oh. Anatomical man or the living skeleton. Sounds uh, much more nice that way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anatomical yeah. man sounds like... A, a song. Yeah. Anatomical man, anatomical man. <laughs> uh, his first documentation of him is him visiting London in 1825. It is like a traveling show. Uh, he was when he was there. He was measured. He was five seven and mm-hmm. weighed seventy eight pounds. Oof. I wonder if you could measure uh, the amount of people saying "blimey" <laughs> when they saw him. <laughs> <laughs> like, just, fuck. Do you think Purple Aki was like, "No, nah, no thanks, <laughs> no, no thanks, bro. <laughs> not, got, not getting me dick on." <laughs> Still worth measuring. Oh, very much. Uh, you can see his heartbeat. Goo. That was uh, <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. You can see it beat through his chest. <laughs> I think I've seen some stuff on World Star like that, like yeah, some yeah. crazy homeless people who like can do that. Ah, uh, okay. They might have the cornopium excavatus build. A lot of dudes on skis in Finland. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. You can't. You can. You can't really see it because it's moving so fast, <laughs> moving faster than the human eye. It's like a hummingbird's wings. <laughs> hey, dude, why is your nipple so blurry? <laughs> so while he was in London, he was, he was then subjected to a bunch of clinical viewings. All these doctors would come in, or you know, or people who thought they were doctors, and, and they're like, "There you go, oh, <laughs> doing no. coke." And so he so, was he was given all of these uh, 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 diagnoses, and one was the uh, 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 pectus. Uh, Oh, I wrote precuts. Pectus. That's a bad mistake. Pectus excavatum. That makes sense. Uh, sternum is much flattened. This is for one of the doctors. Quote, the sternum is much flattened as though it had been driven inwards towards, inwards towards. And it just, there's a parenthesis, congenital abnormality and usually progressive so that at birth it may be unnoticeable. So it didn't start happening until, you know, yeah. he was around age 10. Hmm. Uh, second, his heart was too low in his body. Oh, God, it's disgusting. It was like <laughs> it was like halfway between it was like halfway between his nipples and his belly button. Oh uh, yeah, that's where it goes. It just, yeah, exactly. <laughs> halfway between his nipples and his belly yeah, you button. Yeah, like around his stomach. That's yeah. where your stomach well, like, is. Yeah, you don't even stop blaming the guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 this yeah. fucking asshole. I, I misplaced it. It's got yeah. the audacity to put his heart where his stomach should be. It was be. it was a heart height lower than where it normally that is. That is fucking gross. Why? <laughs> I don't know. It just is disgusting. It is, yeah. Things out of place really fuck with oh, you, don't they? Oh, God. You, you know, you see Forrest Whitaker and you're like, Jesus Christ! Are, are, do you, do what? You? 
I mean, <laughs> for example, <laughs> when you see somebody, eye? yeah, if you, I mean, <laughs> well, is the eye out of place? It's to a direction. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you understand what I mean? Like little things, little imperfections, little slight asymmetries in this, people. These are not little. Are are right? That's what I'm saying. Imagine you're disgusted when you see somebody who's got like, you know, just like an ears lower than another, or a <laughs> not, know. or their nose right, right. to the side. I, I, I really like you talking about this. A lot. When you see these people who are slightly imperfect, that's what, and now this guy's heart's where his stomach should be. His his chest is pointing backwards, <laughs> and you can see if he's nervous. Come on, man, you're gonna fuck. I lose my appetite. I'll become a bon, a bon vivant esquelette. <laughs> Leon talked about that. and Monotroni. <laughs> the thing with Shane Moss, the fucking the X-ray guy has been like, oh dude, you got your dick in your balls and you're <laughs> swallowed. Yeah. You idiot. Are you dumb? Your stomach's, your stomach's all flat. That's what I'm saying. Okay, yeah. And what I'm saying is imagine how freaked out you, <laughs> given how prejudicial <laughs> and superficial we are with small imperfections that everybody has, whether it's a gap tooth in Madonna or a... <laughs> <laughs> or a gap tooth Letterman, <laughs> <laughs> or gap tooth Michael Stray. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And think about how wild we go over that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people give you know Jewel, uh, you know, shit for her crazy tooth. Does she have a crazy tooth? Yeah, she's got a Patricia Arquette tooth. I think it's I beautiful. love that. I think it's beautiful. Yeah, but these imperfections, Aaron, they can be beautiful. Yeah, they don't have to yeah. be destabilizing. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, but <laughs> this guy. To stabilize. Well, he had more. Oh. He also had what is known as a bilateral scapular deformity. Oh, God. scapular. Which means the scapula is your shoulder blade. Uh, and one side was abnormally high because of the failure of the blade to descend during embryonic development oh, from its position in the neck to its normal position in the posterior no shit. thorax. So he had this like Hunch. weird. Yeah. yeah. Probably helped with the bowling. <laughs> yeah, they didn't do much bowling. Kind of scapula. Thing. He also had um, uh, brevicalis, which is a short neck. Hmm. And he is also diagnosed with dysphagia, a.k.a. difficulty swallowing food. Yeah. Jesus Christ. So every well, day... It's, like, oh, it's got to go through the heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 Oh, God. There's a lot going on. Oh, God. Every day he would eat a single bread roll or two to three ounces of food cut very small. Oh, for And God. then he would have one glass of wine, and that was his entire intake, except maybe some water. Good for him with the wine. Yeah. <laughs> right on. I mean, you gotta, you know, you only got so much space down there. You gotta numb the pain your heart's going through if you had a fucking, you know, an oh. extra crust of bread. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's the Jesus diet. He's taking communion all day. Yeah. That's how he lives, so, that's how he lives forever. He also couldn't grow any hair, so he was bald. Oh! He was hmm. like the little guy in um, 300. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what he was like. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm picturing. I'll show you how to get through. Yeah. Show, show me more of these big titted harems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This guy is the guy that sold out the Spartans. That's what you need a picture in your yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so he wore a wig and. Uh, he wore. He wore a wig. So this guy had a scapular degeneration, uh -huh. heart here. Uh huh. Uh, uh, you know, uh, chest back there. Short neck. And wings! <laughs> oh, boy! Oh, boy! And so, uh, I knew you were going there, you piece of shit. Of course you shit. did. Everyone knew it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, I, I'm, I get all of this info from uh, Richard H.R. Park and Maureen P. Park and their whole essay about him. And uh, they write that when he arrived in London, apparently, he took off his wig and he said to the to the women he saw, he said, I am the anatomy vivant that is come to Londres to please all the pretty lady and give them all the much satisfaction. Oh. Oh. And did he get it? Did, did he give it? Uh, it didn't sound did like it. Did he give it? Did he get it? Uh, he was, uh, according to him, he was not exploited at the time, and he thanked his protectors, a.k.a. the traveling show, for helping him make money. And uh, he made some money in, in England. He returned home, uh, and this is from William Holmes' Everyday Book from 1826. He returned home, sufficiently independent, and to live at ease in his native country. And then he went around France again, making some money. 1,500 people saw him in Rouen. And then in 1826, Fra Francisco Goya, who saw him in uh, Bordeaux Fair, was obsessed with him. And Goya drew him. Goya, the artist, the Spanish Francisco artist. Francisco Goya. Goya, yeah. Oh, dude, uh, he drew shit. That was like, yeah. Anyways. 
Stop talking about Spaniards, dude. Well, we're, you know, we're <laughs> perennial. So. At, 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 at Bordeaux, you could see him for 50 cents or 10 sous, which is a five cent piece back then. Um, and blah, blah, blah. There's a whole thing. Did you know, actually, here's a fun, here's a fun fact. Uh, so the, the livre, one pound silver broken in 20 solidi, or sous, mm -hmm. which was then broken into 12 denarii, and that is LSD, and the English system of pounds, shillings, and pence. In Ita Italy is LSD. Mm. Mm. Hey. In How England. about that? And now, now, uh, guess, now they're all quarantined, so see where that gets you. So Goya, Goya paid, saw him, <laughs> Goya became obsessed with him, drew uh, two pictures of him. Um... Or one picture of him, of the living skeleton. There's another one by George Crookshanks. Uh, but here, I'll show you boys both. Uh, is this... The bottom one is Goya. Oh, That's the Goya representation. Yes. Oh my him. god, and he's wearing like a fez? That's his wig. No, the bottom one's definitely a fez. Look at that. Wig, fez. Top fez, one. Fez top, is a the hat, top, right? The top wig. Yeah. Oh yeah, and it's, it's all... like a Shriner hat? Dude, he's yeah. mad skinny, bro. <laughs> Oh, the living skeleton, yeah, yeah, you don't yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. Crookshanks really you know, draws Hulk's him. crazy. I don't know if you knew yeah. this. Did you know anything about his dick? Uh, no word on his dick. I bet he, I bet he had a micropenis and undescended testicles. Undescended? Yeah. Yeah, it did come from his parents, he's saying. No, that's a real thing. Undescended testicles. When your balls drop, you heard that phrase? Your balls drop yet? Yeah. That that means they descended. But yeah. but but how how far they descend? Well, to where presumably yours are now, if they've descended. So presumably, I'm guessing. You never know. So you know that don't it, you know like some. Uh, so my my balls will be hugging my perineum, pretty much because you, you know your body. Or, or would it be inside my body? GB pre pretty high balls. up there. So you know how how some women if they're mal holy they're, fucking shit. See, Jesus what did Christ. I tell you? Yeah. What did I fucking tell you? Freaking out! This is terrifying. Yeah, I mean, he really is. <laughs> real Holy one. shit! Yeah, now I, now think about his balls. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, some women Poor if they're too guys. skinny, if, too, if some women are too skinny or malnourished, they don't have their periods, right? Uh huh. So it, you know, or, or if it happens early in life, if you're malnourished, you don't go through puberty, mm. right? So I imagine that this young gentleman here probably did not have enough body constitution to properly go through puberty and probably had undescended testicles and a little baby dick. Wow. Cool. He couldn't grow hair, right? Yeah, it didn't you seem think, like You it. think your body's focusing on getting rock hard erections and dropping your big fucking juicy balls if it can't even grow hair? Yeah. You're 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 concentrating on getting the, the heartbeat. The food and yeah. the, the nourishment. Yeah. The, the food. The, yeah. The, the yeah. nourishment. I need uh, again, do it. <laughs> again, uh, my more primitive. Uh, I can't uh, re uh, replace myself like on the taste planet. The sperm. <laughs> I wish I had anything to I taste. I don't even know what sperm is. <laughs> now, uh. Oh, God, this guy's disgusting. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. It's just the first guy. <laughs> There's more guys? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude. So, uh, Surratt, uh, there's no real record of him after the Goya piece. There's no record of his death. Um, what, Park and Park say one doctor claimed to perform a necropsy, and his skeleton was placed in the Royal College of Surgeon. They Surgeons. Call them, they called them necropsies back yeah. then? That's funny. Uh, in London, but there's no record of it in London, so there's no no one has any idea. The Goya skeleton is the... There's there's mentions of him, you know, in the, the book from 1826, and mm -hmm. there's... Various mention, but the Goya a drawing of him is uh, basically the end of him. What if he's still walking the earth to this day? Yeah, maybe Goya has that power. Well, he's a living skeleton. Or Goya just killed him and he covered it up, you know? Quick break. Yeah, that sounds like Goya. Bitburger, again, is Deutsches, Deutsches Beer, Beer and Despesta. Despesta. Okay, but now I want to talk about the first living skeleton in America. You got to talk about it. Bro, American, I, I bet you he's a much better living skeleton. Well... There's more about him. Exactly. More is better. He was born in 1788. Hmm. And so, what is that? Uh... The year of our Lord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that, Dominis. That's before Surratt. It is, about, by, by a couple of years, a few uh, years. And uh, now he, normal, everything seems like a pretty normal kid. Um, he joins the, uh, the army. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was born in Connecticut in 18, 1788. In 1812, he he's w with the army, uh, with the uh, um, Randolph contingent from Randolph, Vermont. No yeah. word on 
what his journey was up to there. But there is a uh, word that him and his contingent, the Randolph group, they're going to Plattsburgh to fight in the Battle of Plattsburgh. Mm-hmm. And they get to the river, and they already missed the battle. <laughs> nice. Convenient. And so late. Shocks. they want to get across the river, so they find a boat. And they get on it, and they ride it, try to ride it across the river, but it's leaking so much, it then crashes on the side of the river. They can't cross, so they all, it's the middle of a rainstorm, they all lay down on the ground and go to sleep. Oh. Okay. Is Homeboy already a skeleton? No, he's just a normal. Just a normal 1812 soldier? Yep. All right. And he weighed about 160 pounds or so then. That's gigantic. (laughs) (laughs) He was 5'7". Back then, 5'7", yeah. 160 yeah. is a Goliath. <laughs> well, he was big girl and out of control. Oh, dude. He ain't fat. He's just a little thick. You know what I'm saying? Now, now he claims while sleeping on the ground, uh, he he was affected by a severe cold, he claims. Uh-huh. And then over the next 15 years, he, he would lose... He sounds skeptical, he claims. Well, over the next... You'll find out. Over the next 15 years, he would lose 82 pounds, and no matter how much he ate, he couldn't keep any weight on. Mm. So he eventually was down to 58 pounds. 5'7", 58 pounds, still able to lift 100 pounds. Jesus Christ! Yeah. And so in 1830, he started touring uh, the Northeast, billing himself as the living skeleton. Yeah. He was in Philadelphia, and then uh, traveled to London and Paris, and doctors uh, looked him over and they said, you're the most extraordinary specimen the world has ever beho- beheld. Yeah, As yeah. a direct quote. Uh, this is from the American Antiqu- Ant- Antiquarian Society. So you have to imagine with uh, Surrett, everything, he looks like a mess. Oh. <laughs> right? You got that right, though. But this you, guy... You are a doctor. <laughs> this guy looks kind of normal, except he's insanely skinny. And no matter how much but he eats... But also he's strong. Yeah. yeah, and no matter how much he eats, he, he, he can't keep the weight up. If you're fucking 82 pounds, 100 pounds is not nothing, Aaron. It's, it's Ant-Man shit. Well, like, he's nothing more than At, he weighs. You can bring him to a comic book? That's yeah, very I mean, good. He's a living skeleton. Sounds like a comic book piece of shit. Comic piece of shit. <laughs> so do you, did he get like a... Uh, I bet you what happened. <laughs> Wait, what did you what? say? I bet what? you what happened. I bet you what happened. I bet you what happened. I bet you what happened. Did he get like a parasite or something? Tapeworm. Up his butthole, right? Tapeworm. So in 1830... He laid on the ground he was in a storm it. and it swam it. right up his butthole. <laughs> 1832, the Euron Reflector, one of the best newspapers out of Nor- Norwalk, uh, Ohio. Without uh, a doubt. Oh, yeah, one of the top. F- 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 sponsor the show. <laughs> yeah. 1832, they have this celebrity note in their news- newspaper. One note ahead of their note about Chief Justice John Marshall... One note ahead of that, they write, Calvin Edson, the living skeleton, has returned to New York. Since he left the city several months ago, he lost six pounds. He still enjoys good health. Very huh. exciting times back then. Hey. He was a celebrity. He was worth... I'm a big fucking deal, man. Hey, yeah. man I'm a big, skinny deal. Uh, in 1832, after he came back from Europe, they had this, this what was called broadside uh, printed about him. It was just kind of like you know, a pamphlet about his life and stuff. Uh, basically going through what I've described here. Mm-hmm. Uh, in that same year, November of 1832, he dies. The British Spectator uh, newspaper, they report the following. Quote, the unfortunate Calvin Edison is no longer a living skeleton. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> he is now a regular <laughs> skeleton. <laughs> Boring! <laughs> Next Story. And then they go on to say, though, the mysterious cause of his excessive emaciation has, it is said, been at length solved. Mm. The disease of which he died was tabies mesenteries, or tapeworm. Hey! The worm is said to have been 12 or 14 feet in length. Oh, my God yeah. in heaven. And they were friends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it, they worked uh, together. It, it gave yeah, him yeah. stock picks. <laughs> it was like Venom. Here. Eddie, here's what we think. <laughs> it's a bit of pancreas. <laughs> Spleen. Delicious. <laughs> you fucking asshole. Eddie. You know how much I hate that shit. <laughs> Come on. Don't be a pussy. Oh, God. <laughs> Do you think it called him a pussy? Probably. We're going, no, to, be, no. we're going to be famous, Calvin. Yeah. Uh, 1884 Albany Handbooks. It says that he gave his body to science. 
I could not find. Uh, and then that it was preserved in embalming fluid. I couldn't I find it. I bet no worm any... gave his body to <laughs> yeah, sign, yeah. To sign the will. Started <laughs> nudging him over. Come on, you dead asshole. <laughs> Let me get someone else. Uh, 1999. God, that is so gross. But he, <laughs> ugh, 14 God damn feet. It. It's 1999, his, uh, uh, the family, the, you know, down the line, generational family, they loaned. He used to wear a tight fitting black outfit. Uh, and so uh, and they gave that to the Ran- Randolph Historical Museum in Randolph, Vermont. I don't know if it's still there, but if you're out there, check it out. I have a picture of the smell it, Randolph. <laughs> oh God! I have a picture of the broadside uh, with a drawing of him. Oh God! Uh, Is it done by Todd McFarlane <laughs> <laughs> of Spawn and Venom fame. Oh yeah, dude. I'm, well, I mean, this is wearing clothes. The other guy looked like a fucking. So it was turd. straight up in the War of eighteen twelve that he got it. That he got a tapeworm. Yeah. Damn. That then. <laughs> that a bitch. He's just eating. He's like, I don't know what's happening. Yeah, I eat and I eat and I eat. I guess it's just my fast metabolism. Aww. You have a tapeworm. <laughs> Before this, I used to be huge. Believe me. <laughs> oh my dear God! Imagine this guy fucking crawling around the corner. Oh God! Five fucking, seven, yeah, he's not he's short. Clutching your fucking pearls all day. Get away from me, you skeletonic <laughs> shit! <laughs> Give me your pearls. <laughs> it's not me; it's the worm. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, man. Thinner. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I ate that. <laughs> I met this gypsy. I ate a pie. And now I, I can't keep any weight on. <laughs> fucking piece of shit. Now the last one. Maybe, uh, probably the most famous one. Mm. This is Isaac Sprague. And I, uh, I get this from the American Sideshow by Mark Hartman. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was born in East Bridgewater, Massachusetts in 1841. According to the pamphlet that eventually would be passed around by him, he had age 12, he, you know, by then he was an expert swimmer. Um, and uh, he was swimming a lot. And then something happened at age 12 where he just started losing weight. And no matter what he ate, he couldn't keep it on. Uh, he and a lot of folks, they thought, well, he was probably just swimming too much. <laughs> Burned too many calories. Yeah. What? Uh, when was he born? 1841. In the United States of America. East Bridgewater, Massachusetts. Hey. Mm-hmm. Go Bridgewater. Uh, so he so uh, he just kept living his life, and uh, he worked for his parents. His dad was a shoemaker at first. He worked there, and then his dad opened up a grocery, and he worked there. But uh, not a good look. Have a skinny ass grocer. Yeah. Come, come enjoy all the finest fruits that nature's bounty has to offer. <laughs> it's they're so delicious. <laughs> oh boy, can't wait to dig in. <laughs> I saw a thing today that was talking about oh. <laughs> the red lettuce grown on the International Space Station. Yeah, is just as healthful as yeah. regular. Oh, I'm like, is that well, a word? It's probably because you read it in the Guardian. It was just like on Reddit or whatever. Healthful? Healthful. I don't like that word. No, no, no. It, But it is, I think it's grammatically correct. It sounds like... Um, I'm, I'm sure it is, but also it's like... Oh, what? Like, it sounds like natural taste or whatever they say where it's like... It's uh, a, natural flavoring, that's the one. Oh, yeah. right. Natural that's flavoring. not a real thing. But yeah, they were saying that like... If you want to fucking grab some of this shit on your way to Mars, you can. Yeah, yeah, you can red have lettuce it. is cool. Good. Red I could eat lettuce good. for yeah. twenty five years. Yeah, which is full of nutrients. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Red yeah. lettuce you say is no good. It, it, it's just it, yeah, nutrients because there's no nutrients <laughs> yeah. in it. It's just as healthful, meaning zero. <laughs> yeah. It is yeah. the equivalent of water and no uh, fiber. At least at the space station, they make it with piss. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's probably better for you. Yeah. Uh, Maybe just drink the piss. Yeah. And red lettuce is okay. It's okay. You've had it? Red lettuce? Yes. Yeah. It's You've never seen red lettuce? It it's works. really purple. No, I haven't seen it. What? Huh? See? Mean, you gotta That's... get out more. You gotta take your coat off. Yeah, bro. You need to... yeah, yeah, you gotta say <laughs> stay a while. <laughs> And that's why I haven't seen red lettuce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. my coat's on. Uh huh. It's it's a, it's a symbol of a bigger thing. Yeah, it's a symptom of a larger whole <laughs> spectrum <laughs> of pathologies. It's a symptom of a larger speculum. Of, uh, <laughs> it's it's a quite a large speculum. <laughs> All right, fair enough, guys. All right, so uh, uh, his parents uh, his parents die. He has trouble finding work after that, and, um, and he's a skeleton. Yeah, and in 1865, he's 24 years old, and he's... Nobody will hire me. It's the weirdest thing. <laughs> yeah. They're all the same guy. 
<laughs> He's 24 years old, 1865, and there's a traveling sideshow that comes through town, and he mm. stops in there, and the guy's like, you, you Holy should be here. Shit. Jesus yeah. fucking Christ. You're watching us? <laughs> Drop that head of red lettuce and get up here, you freak. <laughs> Holy shit. Have you guys seen this freak that's with it? You're, you're immense. You're all fired. Oh, God. You let this guy live? <laughs> So the owner uh, offers him a position in the traveling show. Uh, from there, he travels around, and then eventually he's like, this is good, but he hears about Barnum in New York. He goes uh, to New York. PT. Gets, uh, gets a, a job with P.T. Barnum, hey. and according to his pamphlet at the audition, uh, quote, Mr. Barnum stood very near me, and I overheard him say to his agent, Pretty lean man. Where did you scare him up? <laughs> well, you got if he just goes, then you got to scare him. <laughs> yeah, up. exactly. Yeah. This fucking real thin freak is gonna make us rich. <laughs> well, thank you for coming in, Mister. Uh... I still have hearing. <laughs> My other muscles are emaciated. <laughs> Mister Barnum, due to the lack of fat tissue surrounding my skeleton, <laughs> uh, sound reverberates at twice the efficiency as a normal human being. I can hear. I can hear my heartbeat. <laughs> Luckily, my skull protects my brain from the tapeworm. <laughs> I can hear the blood flowing through my vessels. I can hear you think, Mister Barnum. <laughs> I can hear you think. And yeah, in all seriousness, uh, PT is probably somebody we should do a oh, profile. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That guy is just, man, holy shit. Like, so on what? the edge of everything. and Oh, yeah. Just the most American story, but also like the fucking most... Most American story. Yeah. So, Barnum takes him in, and his job is to then stand... In Barnum's, what uh, Barnum has is called, his called uh, Barnum's American Museum. Ah. And so Bar what Barnum did is he bought out another museum, and then he took over another museum, <laughs> and then he just put them together to make his own museum. So you will be my coat hanger. <laughs> <laughs> you stand here. <laughs> Okay, so he's doing he's doing what exactly? He's just standing there. Because in Barnum's museum, he combined the Shutter Museum, which I don't know what was in that, and Peel's Museum, which I'm not sure I don't know what was in that either. But he combined these museums, and then he adds his own shit to it. And so in these museums, it is Barnum American Museum. There's a model of Niagara Falls, hmm. uh, a mermaid diorama of the removal of the remains of Napoleon. You just glossed over mermaid. The Fiji mermaid, I don't know what the, the F. It's a fake, it's a fake. Yeah, a, yeah. You know, yeah. It, it, you you dice up like uh, a, a thing a certain and way a, and, and it, it looks, yeah. I mean, these are all things that we should get, like the ha what is the happy family? What is the what is it? The lightning calculator, the hippopotamus, whales, alligators, prize babies, big dogs, prize poultry, Tom Thumb and his wife, the Belgian giant, Commodore Nutt, Minnie Warren. Commodore Nutt, a.k.a. Sam Calvin Edison, the living skeleton, oh. Julia Pastrana, the bear woman, Madagascar albinos, oh. a regiment of giants, dwarfs, fat boys and girls. Oh. Collection of minerals, shells, stuffed birds, and animals. That's probably what I got from the other museums. This party had everything. <laughs> exactly. Stuffed shells, midgets, rhinos, hippopotamus. Tom Thumb and his wife. <laughs> Madagascar albinos. 14-foot tapeworms. Fiji mermaids. <laughs> so, but then... He hasn't even Edison has Edison hasn't even been there a year. July thirteenth, eighteen sixty five, the museum catches fire and burns down. Yeah, and Edison escapes, and mo like none of the animals escape. Why would him not moving be more of an attraction than him being a living? You know what I mean? Well, like, he, well, he, I mean, he's in. A, he probably has like a, a, a like a four by four enclosure where it's not like he's not like in a cage, but it's just like that's he's an age. attraction. That's a, yeah. You know, he where you stand. He, he's like those guys that you see like on boardwalks that are like. <laughs> I was thinking the, the guys like paint themselves silver and act like robots. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. He was like that. Yeah. But they didn't have robots, so like <laughs> he was a skeleton. So uh, July thirteenth, uh, eighteen sixty-five, the museum catches fire, and it burns down, and Edson escapes. Yeah, he rode the updrafts of the heat. <laughs> yeah, because like a, a paper but plane. I, I, I just want you to imagine <laughs> this scene. Okay. The whole town is like, oh, there's a fire. They all run out. Firefighters show up. One of them, like, there's a, one of them is dragging out 
uh, like a, a stuffed owl. There's another one who's stuck to like a Pee Wee Herman at the pet shop. There's, there, there's another one who's stuck to a wax figurine. Is pulling that out. And as as they're pulling all of these out, as, as they're pulling all of these out, like from the balconies, like the fat man and these giants and dwarves are like climbing out of this burning yeah. building. There's a skeleton dragging an obese person. <laughs> <laughs> the mermaid is swimming in the wax. <laughs> we saw it's, the, it's basically the end of Cabin in the Woods. Yeah, this yeah. fire is so bad we saw skeletons running out of it. <laughs> Griffins so and hot. the Hellraiser Cinnabites are running around. Gigabytes. <laughs> Trillabites. It's the end of Cabin in the Woods. That's just Yeah, in essence, that's pretty close to it. Really wanted a merman. Mm. So uh, he escapes, uh, and uh, from there, he uh, kind of he moves on. And uh, he, when he moves on, he uh, starts a family. He meets this lady, starts a family with her. Oh my god! She be like regular size and shit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, he's. Um, you have to remember, he 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 is. Uh, he's not like he's not short. He's just really skinny. Oh sure. yeah, because chicks they'll deal with the skinny as long as you're I mean, back six then, feet you know, tall. He was making he was making eighty dollars a week. Hey, that's for while he was there, which is about uh, twenty uh, twelve uh, one thousand two hundred fifty dollars today. Hmm. So not bad for a week. Yeah. If he had been there for a whole year, that's something right yeah, there. You Massachusetts, know? it's livable. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, that's what's not So here. he married a lady. New England. He married a lady. He had three normal kids. Here's a picture of all of them together. Oh, God. Oh! <laughs> no! She <laughs> fucked him? Big time, baby. Oh, God. At, at least three times. Ew, ew. You love Dude, it. This is Come fucking on. gross. No, you what like that wearing? so much. No, bro. Yeah, this, you like you know it a lot. This looks like, um, this looks like weird, you... weird AIDS, uh, Somali... Like, real, bro, this is gross. Weird AIDS Somali, this is gross? Can you say anything more <laughs> fucked up on this show? Like the, You total psycho? Dude, this is really bad. His head is normal, but the rest is bad. The holy hell is he saying? You know what I'm talking about, right? No. Not Nobody you, can I'm see the picture, I'm you talking dumb to fuck. Matt. Matt, you understand what I'm talking yeah, about. But not, it's I, like, you, you know do. that National Geographic picture where the vulture is stalking the little starvation baby? Oh, your face says it all, you freak. You know exactly what I'm talking about. No, I don't know what you're talking about at all. Look at how his joints are huge. Yeah, his... he looks like the other guys. No, and he has a, a photograph. Those were sketches. <laughs> yeah. But these children are healthy. God the, bless them. The woman is appropriately uh, plump. To... I think she makes up for... To, to, thank God. I think he shot it into her. <laughs> what? Huh? Yeah, I think he was normal size, and then he shot his weight into her. No, no, that's not how the story goes at all. I made up, I retconned it. Okay. No. Yeah, you... I, 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 I used to be 200 pounds, then I emptied a couple of loads in the old missus here. Jesus Christ. Come on, now let me retcon it. I don't think we can let you retcon it at but all. But look at, look at how gross that is. It's, I mean, yeah, he looks emaciated, and it's... It's, it's off-putting. It, yeah, it is, but also... The family's healthy, which is nice. I'm not yeah, focused agreed. on the family. I'm sorry. I should. Well, be. Uh, you should have focused on the family. You got to yeah. focus on the family. <laughs> focus get, on the family. You got to focus on the family. Every life is precious. Uh, also, all of those kids look like her, <laughs> and not like him. <laughs> well, There's, she, these she, are three she, uh, healthy, non-skinny boys, mm -hmm. and they all look like her. And it seems so like what was his deal? He went swimming, right? He's also he's also like a good nine inches away from all of them clustered together. Yeah. So, so it seems like they might have a little bit of a, you know, I've attitude heard, towards yeah. him. <laughs> if you could not, Dad, if you just could not be in the picture this time. Yeah, it's um, we're really more uh, mama's boys than we are, you know. Apple of our father. Yeah. Guy. <laughs> I don't think I checked. Skeleton it. scions or whatever. <laughs> so he uh, he 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 was a, he swam. His... <laughs> yes, that was the. Oh boy, man! That so is, um, it's haunting, haunting. Gotta be a tapeworm. It's gotta be a tapeworm. So he. Hookworm? Uh... <laughs> oh, did you say bookworm? Hookworm? Yeah, he was a bit of a bookworm. <laughs> yeah, he burns a lot of calories. Yeah, it's kind of a shutterbug too. <laughs> So he uh, he has this family, 
And everything seems to be going well, but then he develops a gambling problem. Oh. And um, by age 44, he's... Gambling is also a parasite. <laughs> yes. Very true. Uh, right. He has a gambling problem. He can't keep a mor- normal job. Uh, so eventually he joins Barnum again, and he tours America and overseas. Uh, by age 44, he's 5'6". He weighs 43 pounds. Dude, he has to keep... He carries a flask of milk around his neck. Milk? Yeah. Yikes. Because anytime he's like feeling, uh, you know, he's not taking in a lot of nutrients. Anytime he's feeling like he's about to faint, oh, he drinks the milk. Is it cow's milk? Jesus. That'll keep him, God. keep him upright. Yeah, it's not it's not oat milk. That's not goat milk no, either. Almond milk. Uh, then 1887, in poverty, he is 46. He dies, separated from his wife and family. Dies mm. of uh, asphyxia. And he is diagnosed with extreme progressive muscular atrophy. Okay. And that was the deal. Yeah. That was the deal. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But did they even look up his butt? (laughs) Wait, what? Well, I mean, did they think there's still a worm? Definitely. I'm 100% convinced. You don't get that kind of atrophy like that without AIDS or a parasite. That does uh, like maybe a, you muscular, know from the muscular swimming? atrophy just means muscular atrophy. It's just just like oh his yeah, his, mu- can't you just... his muscles wasted away. It's not a disease. That's a that is just a description of a condition. I see. Muscular atrophy is not something you catch. It's not something you just develop. There's right. got to be a reason you get it. So like, you think it's the, possible maybe you had a a, some, wor- a worm for a while for sure, and then or or maybe he had, he was anorexic or something. I mean, yeah, you know that that's that's a disease. Yeah, right. The the muscular atrophy is the symptom that you can describe, but that looking at you... that is really, <laughs> boy, that is haunting and really hurts my feelings. <laughs> oh, and so feelings. you created your own ending that you demand is the truth I'm because you're he's, uncomfortable. He's, he's <laughs> yeah, you're retconning the fucking yeah. the history books. Be like, no, I do that worm, dude. I'm telling you. Well, they didn't give any reason. They did not. What? What was their other reason? He swam too much. Well, they said it was like chronic atrophy, or like is that progressive that? muscular atrophy? Progressive muscular. That doesn't mean shit. How the that, fuck do you that know? Is a, He's a doctor. You're <laughs> not. That's just a description of the condition he was in at death. Yeah, but it was progressive. What? It, 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 like Bernie like Sanders? Bernie? <laughs> <laughs> I got the socialism worm. Oh, oh God. Oh. You got anything else? I got some geeks, but... Uh, dude, I'll... that is so gross, dude. Nice. Well, I, I mean... Uh, really nice stuff. I probably can do this quickly. Yeah? So the geek... You Are you familiar with the phrase? I, 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 you told me about this recently, but I, I don't remember because... Uh, I... I don't know. It, it it did shock me that I I didn't know it was a p- specific thing. Mm-hmm. The the geeks. Uh, the geek. We got damned. Uh, so the geek. I I didn't really know what it was. I knew the phrase wasn't exactly you know the nerd. Right. Uh, but isn't the, it also kind of an emaciated freak kind of thing? Uh, I honestly I don't know. Uh, I I know that the term of the, the way we think of it now is not the original term, right? Um, you know, and I remember the you know the first time I, there's, you know, Bob Dylan has a song. Um, I believe it's Mr. J- uh, it's not well, Mr. Jones is the character in it, but he says, you know, uh, you go watch the Geek, and he immediately walks up to you and says, "How's it feel to be such a freak?" Mm-hmm. And you say, "Impossible," as he hands you a bone. And I was like, okay, I never, I never looked that up, but I always knew there was something about it. And the geek is the carnival sideshow that eats whatever comes into his cage. Oh, yikes. And this has been a thing for a, a long time. And, you know, there are variations of it. Um, you know, from, this is from the Big Book of Freaks, where uh, one of the originals uh, was a French entertainer named uh, uh, Dufour. He would take a cat, no, no. rip it apart, oh, oh, God damn it. and then eat live. Yeah, God damn it! He would eat piece by piece, and then he would pull the cat out of his mouth, fully formed. No. Mm-hmm. Like, and the cat would walk upright. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. 
Bro. I don't like I feel so much better. <laughs> Start baking bread on your chest. <laughs> Little cat skeleton. Oh my god. You'd love that. It's so gross. It's like his stomach is like those um Thai ladies' vaginas from Thailand. <laughs> those you know, like, they can put like quarters and bottles up there, and they can give you from correct. Thailand. Well, yeah. Well, is, he, is the qualifier? Yeah, well, from Thailand, not, not from Hollywood. Oh, like it's not like what they're doing in Kentucky, right? Like, you get it? No, I do. Yeah. Wow. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> well, they can give you correct change and stuff. I don't know anything about. Okay, you know the ping pong shows. Yes. Okay. Now imagine instead of ping pong balls, it's currency, and then you on the uh, as a patron freak at the audience which you are you say oh, 45 bot or whatever it is for the currency mm -hmm. of, and then she goes clang 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 with her vagina muscles and then gives you correct change wow so it's like that instead it's this guy's mouth and the money is a cat's carcass yeah it's the exact same well there's a pussy involved <laughs> <laughs> so so the etymology of, of geek is that um it's it means fool or freak Fool so it's it, it's been a, a term that for centuries it's just it's a catch all. It's a catch all, hmm. but um, in before nerd speak, it was a thing applied to you know in these traveling freak shows, the person who would shove a t bunch of stuff in their mouth. Oh god, it's so sick. Now it wasn't always you know tear up a cat. Um, there was a French entertainer named Mark Norton, and what he would do is he would drink forty glasses of water. Or beer without pausing, just chug him down, and then he would spit the whole thing like through a hoop or something. Jesus fucking Christ! Why is that the one that gets you? No, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> why are these sons of bitches always French? Also, <laughs> that is well, a good I mean, question. That is a good question. <laughs> that is a good question. Now, um, I do well, you know what? They were they were an empire at the time. Yeah, true, yeah. So there's true. more, more, more spotlight on. Sure, very good. Uh, you know, uh, but also it, he, it wasn't just water. He would also uh, swallow twelve frogs and six goldfish, and then he would, um, you know, swirl them around in his stomach. What was and his then name? Uh, Mark Norton. Hi, and, and I'm then... <laughs> Mark Norton, and welcome to Jackass. <laughs> and he would, yeah, he would spit them all out into a bowl, and he would say, "I never lost a pet." Oh God! And uh, here is here is that cat. Here's an advertisement from when he was touring Germany. Uh, Mac Norton das Menschlich Aquarium. Mark the human Norton, aquarium. The human aquarium. Whoa, that is pretty cool, man. It also, they painted, oh, that's the tuxedo tails, but it looks like a ball sack. You'll get it when you see it, John. That's a pretty cool painting. I kind of like is. that one. That's actually. really good. That's really good ad. A very of the time. Look at that. Mm. Those, those are not his balls. That is a tuxedo tails. Yeah. But he and he does not have two heads. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Just to clarify. <laughs> very good. Thank you. <laughs> well, you're very. <laughs> yeah, I'm you know, <laughs> simple. simple. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Just want to let you know. It's I don't not... understand. Wait, are these his balls? <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> So, uh, and, and, and uh, in, in Poland, there was a, a popular Jewish performer uh, named uh, Moish Feierstein. Moish Feierstein? And uh, Feierstein. And uh, he would, his phrase was, eat in good health. And what he would do is he would swallow dozens of frogs, frogs and mice and then do the same thing. Mazel tov. And uh, what, he would like barf them up. Yeah. And uh, he did that in Warsaw. But He's they in... come up circumcised. He... <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. You take a tiny little nibble on the way down. <laughs> He's in the noted Edward Portney book, Freaks, Geeks, and Strong Men, Warsaw Jews and Popular Performance, 1912 to 1930. Damn. He's, he's actually, a, it's a pretty fascinating book. Here's a picture of Moisture. Does he look like he circumcised a lot of frogs? Oh man, this is this is straight up Nazi propaganda, man. This, this oh boy. What, I mean, it, it does I mean, seem like good I, fun. It, I mean, except for the frogs. No, it's a mice. hell of a hell of a showman, Moisha Feierstein's. Wow. And just here's a quick little aside here. Um, 
There was nothing ostensibly Jewish about Firestein's act. In fact, ingesting frogs and mice is clearly contrary to Jewish law. <laughs> <laughs> it's about the least kosher thing you can do. Yeah, pretty much. Oh man. <laughs> Fuck. That's crazy, dude. And this is this That's is the cover of the book. A strong man. That one. Oh wow. That is a strong man. Wow, man. Huh. But that of course, is you know that is part of the geek shtick, yeah. the swallowing and spitting. But, but also the the uh, the uh, forty glasses of water is so like that's just yeah. I, I, I guess it's because it's nonstop, you know. But also like if you're gonna, you know, well, keep, not yeah. not kill these things right. and vomit them up, like you gotta have like a shitload of water in your stomach. But also yeah, yeah for sure, the uh, vast amount of water in any eating contest is like kind of like the key to victory. Yeah, yeah, yeah softening up the hot dog buns. Yeah. But the real geek brings us back to Goya, like uh, the Book of Freaks does. Uh, and it points to Goya's painting of God Kronos eating his young. Yes. You know that one? I, just, that it's, one is it's, gnarly. F- yeah. Nightmare inducing. Because the real, the real geek is the one who eats, swallows, and keeps everything. Oh, like doesn't spit it back up? Like Terrare. Yeah. Like Nicholas Wook of England, who could down a whole sheep, 84 rabbits, or 30 dozen pigeons in one sitting. 30 dozen? Mm-hmm. Pigeons are small, you yeah. 30 dozen pigeons? There's not a lot of meat on them. Dude. For the love of God, this Matt, fucking don't meth- underplay this, this 30 <laughs> dozen. This meth head Finnish guy had a, a tiny little jaybird, and he lasted him two weeks. This guy's eating 30 dozen <laughs> pigeons? Sure. sure. Pigeons? Yeah. Now, back then, they were emaciated, too. <laughs> then a Siberian J? <laughs> what did it find? One twig? <laughs> One twig of steel? Jesus <laughs> Christ. The real geeks. <laughs> they kept it all. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Poser-ass geeks spitting it up. But the carnival geek, usually a drunk they would find in town, would pay him, would be a guy who, at the freak show, would sit in a cage... Chewing on bones, and then when the crowd grew big enough, the barker would throw him snakes or chickens. Ooh, yikes! And he would rip the heads off of them Carpet and eat them. Sandwich. <laughs> and that was the whole thing. And he'd get paid in money or booze or whatever it took Pigeons for him just snakes. to eat shit. Did they ever make him eat shit? <laughs> Here's a nice piece of shit. <laughs> Burp. <laughs> now the the old the only issue is that there really isn't a lot of Meat on the documentation snake. about who the geeks were, because usually it was like a drifter. Or like... <laughs> yeah, there's no intimate diary of the yeah. geeks. Yeah. I ate so much shit tonight. <laughs> it really sucked dick big time. But, but also I'll eat that. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't suck dick. I, the plight the plight of I geek. No, there's not there's there's not a lot of documentation about the most shameful career you could ever have. Yeah, they probably ate it. You know? they, they probably wrote great diaries but then just Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's freaking out. Of it's so, but it's so. Of course, of course. Well, yeah, he wouldn't. It wouldn't be a great expose. <laughs> yeah. My time as a geek, <laughs> yeah. where my master would come in and be like, "Eat this fucking hard drive, you piece of shit." <laughs> Yes, now the geeks they run in squads. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> and also there, there are people who like they'll they'll eat like, uh, uh like an eighth, like they eat like a a gram of metal a day. And yeah, then they'll eventually. Like, then I just uh, ate a motorcycle, and you're like, uh, okay, well, yeah, sure. Well, yeah, it was that guy that ate the plane. Yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Monsieur Toot Le everything. Monsieur mm-hmm. Mister Eat everything. Yeah. Called. Oh, uh, there is one slightly documented. Uh, geek, and it's kind of amazing because uh, she's also a lady. Hell well, yeah. that. Well, I know, I know, I know. 
Uh, don't let me. Don't fluid make me, gender. Don't gender make, don't fluid. Don't make me educate you. There's no on such thing as gender. The, yeah, the, yeah. the liberal hoax of gender. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Now, uh, according to... Don't do it. <laughs> I'll do I'll fucking do it. <laughs> All the sources I could find about this uh, person... <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you're talking human. We're all just like circular... Hum- Humex. They all said the... <laughs> Humex. Hum- they- there's no man. There's <laughs> Humex. They all said the same thing, and it was all like... They all referenced each other, it seemed like. So this is basically... The Book of Freaks is basically the... Uh, is what I'll use. Uh, her name was Ver- Veronica Shant. That and like according shit. to all of the sources, she loved her job, uh, eating chicken heads or field mice or God. snake heads. Oh my, God. Uh, oh my God! Oh my God! And of, when uh, the chick does it, it's the best so, job I could ever ask for. I can't get enough stuff in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and according to their source, she could make half the marks throw up just from watching. I guess it's the sign of a good Are show. Are you kidding? This is like legalporno.com. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's yeah. up, pussies? You ready for a show? <laughs> you want to see me eat some stuff and I, you won't be able to hold down your lunch? <laughs> <laughs> You're not even eating anything. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking pussy. See if you can last five minutes without barfing. <laughs> you won't last five minutes watching this show. <laughs> Gastroenterologists hate this chick. If you believe in gender, which you don't, <laughs> dare you not to puke. Uh, so then she uh, eventually she did get married. Uh, they split up when she was pregnant, and uh, she had the child immediately placed into an institution, and then went back to her job. Jesus oh, fucking Christ! Boy, at least she didn't eat it. Well, yeah. Did she eat the placenta? <laughs> Lots of normal people eat the placenta. I mean, maybe she figured this is probably not a good place for a kid to grow up. Yeah, that's, true. that's true. But I don't know. I'm not saying a freak show isn't. But when your mother's just devouring stuff in a cage, well, there's always gonna be food. <laughs> <laughs> food? I would. That most of that is not is uh, food. Food's relative. Food for who? <laughs> You're just breastfeeding gigabytes from the hard drive. <laughs> uh, you ain't <laughs> this babe. They usually don't make B drives, but yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, it's all pretty, pretty sad. So, so during pregnancy, the dude left. It didn't say yeah, who. She, uh, ironically, like, she maybe she need his left ass. the dude. Maybe the carnival. Left town, yeah, okay. Who's to say? Who's to say? <laughs> I bet, what, wouldn't it be fucked up if she didn't, though? If she didn't eat ass? Yeah. But she ate everything else? Yeah. I'm like, come on, what gives? <laughs> You're inventing a conflict that doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> it's there. It's there. It's there. Sure. All right. Let's just let me build my yeah, own just fantasy descend world. descend from the mm-hmm. ski slopes and come yeah, back to uh-huh. us. <laughs> <laughs> You mean was that a was that a joke about the Finnish guy? <laughs> <laughs> was that a joke about me personally? Is it? <laughs> it was a joke about you. Just as you come back from the ski slopes, just you know, throw away your machine gun and just come back to normal uh, life. Sp- spit out your <laughs> Soviet J. <laughs> yeah, get off the meth. Put the weight back on. <laughs> that is. Do you have any? Cool pictures of her. Uh, <laughs> no, the only one I have are just the the fake ones they drew for any, any book nude, of freaks. Any nudes? But uh, that's is. that's freaks and geeks for you. Oh boy, freaks and geeks, pretty hot stuff. <sighs> These geeks just mowing down stuff is they gross. Just, yeah. And I think uh, now it's like, it's all kind of coming back to me. Is is the the kind of the evolution of the word geek? From this consumer of all things, does that kind of uh, become the? That's a very good hypothesis, Aaron. Uh, yeah, I would I, say that's I does it become the what? The, well, the, 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 the geek term is, that is the, now the person that has all can't of, get enough of instead of you know snakes and uh, rattlesnakes and pigeon heads and cats. Mm-hmm. It's you know uh, data or you know well, it was, I mean, it was it was certainly, but also um, it. You know, Just pejorative. As I the culture changed, it was a, a big joke in Sanford and Son. Uh-huh. So that was part of it. Because that, and I think that's helped oh, shape like, it into nerves. Oh, you're such a geek. Yeah. Hmm. But, but, you know, so. I'm coming home. You know, the. My son's a geek. Without the freak show, the idea, there's not 
the absurdity of chewing the heads off chickens no, right. is just like, you're a weirdo. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. That's fair enough. That is pretty weird. It's pretty weird, wild stuff. It is eccentric. Certainly. I think uh, um, I have... I have a, a hot button thing, but I think I'm going to save it for next episode. Because, Hell yeah. Oh, very nice. We, uh, we filled up, um, what's the, the freaks and geeks take a minute. They Dude. do. You know what I mean? Do. With all that shit they're eating. Yeah. And, you know, plus we had, you know, your fucking meth head finished fucking weirdo. Who you also know? ate animals. Yeah. Uh, once. Well, or one. Maybe ass. One. one. Probably a bunch of ass. And a yeah. finch. <laughs> <laughs> and he finch. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Any finch? Any finch? <laughs> 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 hey, dude, man. What'd you see? <laughs> <laughs> Not Rambo 1, but the right, 2. We got cut up like he was in the Siberian <laughs> tundra for three days. 94 pounds. You know what I'm Shred about? Cut Not up. just no, one, no, but no, the That was puffy, but that was Any chips? Any the pa <laughs> The pause. The pause. <laughs> yeah. The eyes in that scene, incredible. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna save this this profile I've had for three weeks. That I am <laughs> That's a insanely good sign. That's a... excited about for next week. Hell yeah! When we have uh, our guest um, that I'm not gonna say the name of, but uh, we're gonna have another guest, and it's gonna be a, a fine show. And I am in, I am so psyched about the insanity of this little profile I'm going to bring to you guys. Fantastic. Um, I'm so excited. I'm so ex very ex excited. Um, I'm going to say goodnight. My name is John Fahey. My name is Aaron Pita. Mepperso. Good night, everybody. We love you.